Okay, guys, today's the day. You have a lot of questions about the USB portion of using your PE550D or any brother machine, really. It's almost very similar. Uh, I just got off of finishing uh, doing a video on how to just, you know, simply put a name on like a child's sweater and I put it on the back of the hood. So really cute. Um, so, okay, I was trying to think of how you want to do this because we're going to start from the very beginning, okay? So what I'm going to show you here is I have a USB. You do not need to have a USB. I understand you can still just hook your computer up to it just with a USB that comes from your computer. So it has to be USB to USB, okay? So all the cords I have in my house are like micro to USB. So I couldn't find one that was just a basic USB cord to USB. So if you have that, you don't need to have your, um, your, uh, you know, your storage here. But I am going to use this USB. It's super old. It's four gigs. There was nothing on it. So I'm like, yeah, that's a good one to use. So... Okay, you guys know, I've mentioned before in all the different videos I've made from the Futura Quintet, from the C100 videos way back in the day, which were on my old channel that are gone now. Um, I love designs by Juju. So this is their website. Right now they have a huge sale. I have nothing to do with them. I don't make money from them. They don't sponsor this. This is just me telling you this is where I get a lot of designs because I do like their designs. They're super cute. There's tons of uh, companies. Brother themselves says to go to ibroidery.com and it's actually on the machine. I never noticed that. It must be their company, obviously. And you can buy more Disney um, designs, all kinds of stuff, right? All kinds of different things, not just Disney, but tons of stuff. So they are saying, you know, use them. But um, I have this here and I already have my account open. So what I just want to show you is when you come in here and you're going to buy something, um, you know, it's just like any other shopping place. Oh, look at this Christmas peaker topper. It's super cute. You can click on it. Um, and then they'll show you like what designs are there because it's not just that one the little picture that you see and so if you buy this set it's a dollar right now right 10 for 10 um, you get all these different designs what oh <laughs> I forgot this computer has a touch screen one thing I do want to mention about this though is and I just realized that I'm gonna burn my buns here because I forgot that um, some of their designs are already just a certain size you can't size them um, like once that, well, you can size them, I guess, in your embroidery, but just here. So a lot of the designs I bought were already five by seven or bigger. And so I can't even get it on the brother. It's like, nope, it's too big because they don't even want you, you know, they don't, they're not gonna let you load it in there and then, um, what's the word? And then um, manipulate it, right? Where like in Singer, you might be able to get it on your software and then you can manipulate it, make it smaller or something. So what these guys recommend is to have a certain, um, embroidery uh, editing software and you can see it on here I forgot the name of it right now because it's not anything I need but what I want to show you is where you're going to find that information out it's called Christmas Peakers <laughs> and you see all the little images it tells you right here the sizes four sizes included four by four five by seven six by ten eight by eight so for our machine since this thing only has one hoop size the largest is four by four you can buy a little round one that is smaller <laughs> you probably don't even need that or want that um, it has to have at least the 4x4 size included in there or else you can't mess with it. Unless you have an embroidery software that you can mess with it, then put it on your USB and then put it into your um, brother, okay? Otherwise, you can't even, it won't even let you, like I said, put it in the palette there. Okay, so now let's say you bought your little designs. What happens is they'll just be in your account and they're going to be in your account forever. I've bought designs five, six years ago, whatever it was. They're still there. They guarantee you that they will be there. I would just download them onto a disc. When I first bought them, I, down, I put them on a CD. Maybe if you have a thumb drive big enough or like a terabyte, just download all of them. So what happens is they're gonna be downloaded as a zip file because they're pretty big files, right? So whenever you get one of these, it's gonna have the option, and I'll show you right now, my downloads, so these are the ones I bought. And um, it's gonna give you, like it says download, um, these are all way too big. So what I wanted to download was probably, um, even the alphabet, they're really big, five by seven, which I didn't realize when I bought them, I bought tons of them. So I'll have to only use those with my Futura Quintet. But, um, uh, you know, mug and a, uh, in the hoop designs, which uh, are basically, you just lay down what it's telling you and it'll sew for you. And then you have a finished item at the end. So it's pretty cool. Um, different fonts, words, all kinds of stuff. Um, so what I wanted, I think, to download for this one. I'm just gonna make a towel and I was thinking about making a gift for a friend. We like wine, we like coffee, but I'll probably gonna use a coffee one. Where is it? Right here. Like coffee is my love language. Super cute. So I'm gonna click on that. Well, I'm not gonna click on it because I don't really need to. What I wanna do is download, okay? So once you bought from them, 
it's just here. It's, it's going to be in your account. You can download everything, download what you want at a time, download only what you need. So when you click download, it's going to ask you, hopefully you can see that, what format you want. Okay, so I know for Brother it's PES. I think for Singer you can use So or PCS. It doesn't matter. They're all here. Okay, the Triple X, VIP, VP3, all of it's there. You can download all formats. That way, let's say in 10 years you bought a different machine. Oh, now this machine uses EXP. Okay, well, I have it because you already downloaded it. So you can download all formats or you can click on one at a time and only download the one. So I'm going to click all formats just because. And I'm going to save it as something because I want to save it on this USB. So I'm going to put my USB into my port here. Otherwise, you can save it to your computer, right? And then just Again, if you have the USB to USB, you can use your computer to get them into your uh, machine there. So I just put that in there. I'm going to say save as. Um, it just it already says DBJJ Coffee World Art 3, and that's good enough for me. So I'm just going to say sure, and I'm going to make sure it's on my Kingston. So I'm selecting Kingston. because that's Select where you want, obviously. Let me... Sorry, guys. Oy. If you're not uh, computer savvy, you want to choose where you're going to save it to. And it says save as compressed zipped folder, and that's okay. I'm gonna leave it that way just for now. Compressed zip folder, so I'm gonna save it. And it's gonna put this huge folder, that what's gonna end up being a huge folder on my uh, USB. It's a few seconds remaining. And then um, we're gonna have to unzip it. So right now it's uh, doing obviously my McAfee, running security scan. All right, so I want to open it. And I'll just say open. A website wants you to use your pro your computer. Yes, um, I'm gonna say not to show me for that program again. Um, so at the very top, this is extract, right? So if I try open these, they're not quite what I want. So I just want to extract all of them. I don't mind uh, that. I think earlier when I clicked, oh, <laughs> I just made it bigger. When I clicked on the one, nope. Okay, let's click on. Uh, the color charts, okay? Because I kind of want to know what I need to use for that. So I'm double clicking on color charts. And so there's so many different designs. Each design obviously is gonna have a color chart. Let's say love language, which is probably the one this is coffee is my love language, is gonna be here. Now, it's extracting them one at a time as I'm opening them, but you can also just extract the whole thing because it's a zipped file. So if you know anything, I, I'm not great at computers, just say extract all of them. And then it's gonna add another folder that's extracted, that's open, that's huge, because now you've opened everything up and you can see. So here it's telling me it's gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, different colors, uh, seven different things it's gonna do. So if you want your hearts the same color, you don't have to change the color there, but you have your color chart, obviously you can make this bigger so you can see it better. I know it's kind of small right now, but all that information is there. And then that's just for you to know, like, okay, what colors I need for this project. And let me go back one. Doo, doo, doo. Um, sorry. Um, I kind of want to do one that includes a little bit of, um, what's the word? Fabric, because I don't think we've done that before. So sometimes what it'll do, it'll tack down. It'll show you where you need to put your fabric. You put the fabric down and then it'll sew over that, the embroidery, and then you cut that fabric away and it looks really cute. So I think I'm gonna include, I'm gonna do that today just to show you how to use the USB. Also another little technique, right, of using your fabric. So we don't need to open these up, but basically, you know, PES, it's all there. I can click on it. It's not gonna show me anything because it's a PES file. Um, that doesn't really work on the computer. It works for the uh, laptop, I mean, for the machine. But they're all in here, okay? So in the different sizes. So you'll see there's like four of each design of the same name because there's four different sizes of these things. So let me just close that up. And I'm going to eject my file. Well, you know what? Let me just make sure that it's ready for this machine because I don't know if I put it in there that's going to say, oh, hey, this is open and I know how to use it, you know? So I want to make sure. So let's go Kingston again. Coffee World. See, it's still zipped, the file. And I think I want to, okay, so I'm just right clicking on it and I'm going to say extract all because I want it to be open. I don't know that, like I said, when I put it, the USB in there that it's going to say, oh yeah, I know how to unzip this for you. So I'm just going to unzip it, show extracted files, and we're just going to extract, okay? Just because it's going to take a second. It's a lot on this file. So I really don't know how big this thing is going to end up being. 
It says it has 288 items. Because, like I said, it has several different things. Four of each... Uh, four sides of each design. Plus the color charts that go with it. Plus some other artwork information if you need it. So there's a lot of stuff on this little... Um, in this one uh, file. So I'm going to let it uh, extract and I'll be right back. Okay, so just finished up. It just shows me what the files are that are in here. Again, they're all there. I mean, it's what it is. Okay, so let me click off of there and make sure everything is good. So I don't need my computer anymore at this point, but I'm just going to eject the thing. Like I said, I would totally download everything just in case. I mean, you never know. I'm sure like right now as a company designed by Juju just bought out another company that does these same things. And they're like, Hey, we have all their designs starting next week. They're going to have the whole catalog of whatever the other company was. I can't remember what it was right now, but, um, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, I always like companies having their own little thing, but at the same time, you know, it's nice to go to one place and have all of the designs that you would like to get there. Okay guys, sorry about that. So we're done with our computer. So what we're going to do is go on to our machine. So at this point you should know it turns on right here. There's a switch. And I'm going to go ahead and take my USB. I already tried to do this because I've, I've done it a few times and that file, just because it had everything in it, when I extracted everything, everything, it was like not working real well. So I went back and only downloaded the PES, which again, just click PES and only download that, extract those same files. Same thing that you just saw me do, but just with the PES stuff, okay? Because I think it was too much and it was like, uh, I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to put this in here, right in the USB port, which I just noticed doesn't have a cover, does it? Did it have a little cover or something? Hmm, it should. But, oh well. So we're gonna put that in. That, okay, perfect. Ooh, that's like the first time I've ever gotten that in there correctly like that. Okay, so it's always good to have your color charts open because I didn't pay attention to that. I don't even know which pattern I was to use, but like I said, I wanna use one that probably has some fabric just so we can incorporate that. So um, let's press, hopefully you can see that, the thing to get started. It always makes an ugly noise. Uh, my presser foot's already up. If the presser foot was down, it would tell me to put the presser foot up. It's up already. And then it always says to move your hands away from the carriage and press OK. So now the carriage is going to move a little bit. OK, here's the fun stuff. This is things that you might already have saved on the... Let's say you have... The, I guess it has some memory on here already. So let's say you had made a design that you wanted to keep doing or that you just saved. It'll be here. It has a little pocket. It has a, the picture of the sewing machine in a pocket and it means it's saved but we're not using that we're using this USB port and now like I said I went back and saved the PES file so I'm not sure which one's which because they all look the same but this is the Rudolph one that I showed you guys earlier let me show you real quick what that looks like actually because this one doesn't work so there's Rudolph here's all the different arts color chart if I click on that it's not going to do anything because it doesn't know what to do with it it's not going to show it to you so let's go back oops back one ah back all the way. <laughs> um, let's move until we see PES. So when I open PES, it shows it to me. I'm like, oh great, you know, these are the different sizes. It doesn't tell you the sizes, but it does show the designs. If I click on it, it's too large for the extra large embroidery frame. And the frame, the four by four frame, the one that comes with is supposedly the extra large frame already. So just say, okay, because none of them are gonna work. So let's go back. And I'm gonna assume it's this one because that's the second one I loaded. I don't know. We'll see. Yes, yeah, so there's nothing on that one. Okay, let's go back one. Is it this one? So I just kind of have to see how I thought about it for a while. That's what I wanted to see, because I'm like, okay, pick the right one. Sorry about that. I live in town, right by a firehouse. Uh, nice people, but you know, it gets loud. So it's only letting me see like the ones that are white, these blue or grayed out ones is not something I'll be able to use. So I can just keep pressing forward. And it's basically the first one in each design because that's the four by four size of each design, right? So I'm gonna go back and pick that very first one because it had a little bit of fabric and we said that we wanted that, this one right here. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna say, it's telling me I can't use the little hoop, which is obvious. <laughs> I'm gonna say set. If there's anything else that you wanna mess with on here, you know, I guess that's what you can do. You have also a delete function, which is interesting, but I'm just gonna say set and here it is. So it has a little arrow that's gonna have some fabric. It says life begins with coffee and lots of different things you can do with it. Again, to mess with it, I don't, well, let's see. Let's see what that looks like. I was gonna say, I don't know, we can move it, but there's, it's already pretty much there, <laughs> okay? Like, I don't know what you would move it. Maybe up and down a little bit. I'm not gonna do that, but you can do that. And then if you just want dead center, just press the middle button there. 
the size of it. Um, let's see. Let's press something and see if it does it. Let me press that. And I don't think it's going to really let you make it any smaller, to be honest, because you can't mess with it, right? It's what it is. The stitches are designed to stitch for that size and that's it. Again, if you have an embroidery editor, good luck. You can probably do that. I'm just going to say okay. Um, you can rotate it. That is one thing we can do. We can turn it, you know, sideways or whatever way, however you want. But it's really a square, so who really cares? I don't think that's going <laughs> to do anything for me right now. But it depends on how you have to hoop your item that you want to embroider on. Maybe you do have to turn it, okay? So you have that. And then you can delete it. You can uh, mirror image it, which is interesting. It'll just be backwards, okay? So I don't think anybody wants that for this design, but that's okay. So there it is. Uh, if you want to save the design onto your machine, you press this little pocket and it'll save it, okay? Um, what was the, uh, there was something else I wanted to show you guys. Was it here? No. Let's just go back. Um, so anyway, I'm done. So I'm going to say edit end because I'm done editing it. There's not really much to edit right here. You can still move it around a little bit. You can press rotate from here. I want to show you this little guy right here is what I was trying to show you in the last video should show you where it's going to be on the hoop. Okay. And right now we don't have anything hooped up yet, so it doesn't really matter. But let's say we did have it hooped up. I would press that button, that one that looks like a little like tracing a map. And then it shows you some different things, and I don't care about that right now. Actually, if you wanted to start somewhere else, you press these other buttons. But right now, it's going to start in the middle. That's where the needle is. That's where it's showing us. But let's say I want to see where it's going to uh, sew exactly. You press this, and it's going to move this thing. And when this is sitting, you know, when you're all hooped up and you're sitting there and you, you can leave your little guide on there, you'll be able to see kind of what it means, right? Right now it doesn't mean anything. The way it's moving doesn't look like anything. But you'll see how it kind of, this will be moving around. And you'll see exactly where you're going to be printing or embroidering. Um, so I'm just going to say okay because nothing, that doesn't bother me none. Um, and then that's about it, you guys. So what I'm going to do is get a towel. And I only have like towels from the Dollar Tree. That's what I'm going to use. If I had one that wasn't so fuzzy, I would probably use that because it would come out nicer. I need to get obviously different colors of thread and my um, uh, little piece of fabric for that little arrow at the top. And what it looks like right now, it looks like I need one, two, those are the same color, one, two, three, four colors of thread and um, the piece of fabric. And again, you have your color charts, you can pull it up, you can pull up your design and see exactly what you want to look like. I'm probably going to follow these colors kind of closely. Um, Actually, there's one more color. There's little yellow swirls in here. So let me grab some threads, my towel, the uh, backing that we're going to need, uh, your, your, your um, stabilizer, and we'll get it hooked up and get okay, going. So I'm going to just put this aside. I have a bunch of threads here. I have another sulky one. These are just the ones I've thrown together like this the way I always keep them, but they're basically my embroidery threads. I'm going to pull this red one out. It's quite possible that maybe I do need red, but I don't know when it's going to come up. But I'm going to try to follow along with the colors that they suggest, right? To make a nice kind of country looking cute thing here. Okay, so what we need to do is hoop up everything so that we're ready to go. We'll put it on the machine and then we'll select our, you know, start putting threads in. Um, this machine is so easy to work with. I love it. So. This is, it should always be to the left, okay? Your um, hoop, the little piece of metal, because that's how you hook it in there. This little guy has some directions on it. Like this is the back side, it has nothing, but on this top side, it has a little arrow and a little notch, and then these notches inside. The little arrow should always be up facing the other arrow, okay? So we have that. And then I'm just gonna use some cheap stabilizers I had ordered on Amazon, but um, you know, you can order the rolls, their sulky brand or whatever. I think last time I ended up with two pieces, I was like, this is really thick, and it was two pieces together, so I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. Yeah. And these guys sometimes, look at that. So there we go. One piece. They're still good and thick, but this is thinner than <laughs> two pieces, obviously. Okay. So, as far as our towel goes, this again, I just picked this up at the Dollar Tree. I am probably just going to embroider right in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously this has its own thing, but maybe here. 
But if you're gonna give this as a gift, obviously you get a nicer quality towel is what I would do. And what's nice about this thing is it's so creased up and so like just has been in its packaging is that all I have to do is open it up and kind of eyeball what I need to happen here. So I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna drape it over this. This is the part that isn't that easy guys because <laughs> It's easy to see like what I want, but same time from left to right, I might end up crooked. Like it's, you know, it's a problem sometimes, but I'm just keeping an eye on where I want this. I can feel the thing down here. I have my hoop. So you saw I had the stabilizer, I have my hoop. I can kind of feel that this is straight, but I'm trying to see about that. And then you're just gonna feel your way in here. Now, I want this to print basically at the lowest part of what I'm doing right now. Just trying to see if this is straight or not. What's a bummer is that this is a white towel, so it's very hard to tell if there's, <laughs> you know, how straight or not this thing is, but there's no markers, there's no <laughs> delineation lines other than the lines that are kind of put in there. And then when you're done with this, you might end up seeing that, hey, you know what? That's actually crooked, which is always fun. All right. Okay. So that's pretty tight already. And what I would do is, well, you have this in here and you're just checking it out, is lay this out. And I'm sorry, I'm going to need open it up and kind of see where it is on your towel, right? Look at the whole towel and see if that's crooked or what you think of it and adjust. So it takes a little... And I'm sure other people have better ways of doing this. Let me unscrew this a little more. I never remember which way is tight and which way is looser on this thing. I'm just, there we go. I feel like it's too far this way. It needs to come over more this way. All right, so I'm going to continue messing with this until I have it nice and straight where I want it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm okay. Who knows? <laughs> This towel has so much to give to it. I'm just tightening this up. And again, this should be tight. It sounds like a drum. And if you really wanted to put some spray adhesive on the back of this, um, you would put it between the towel and the uh, stabilizer to keep them together. And that's also a good way, because kind of when you move it around, that the stabilizer's not going all over the place while you're trying to adjust your, your uh, fabric or your item to be embroidered. So that's just something to keep in mind. So I am going to... Readjust this camera a little bit. Bring this back. And we're gonna set this in here just to get ready. And a lot of times as we're doing this, I work it in here and when I get to the frame, see how it kind of gets stuck? I um, just lift the presser foot just a little higher. It has a little, little bit of give and then you can get that in there. And again, just line up your little um, silver tabs there and you're good to go okay make sure nothing's underneath the embroidery um, it looked like I had plenty of uh, bobbin thread but if you think you're in danger of running out of bobbin thread what I would do is just put a whole new bobbin thread in there um, you know wind it up and get going so like I said I don't know which color is going to go first so I think what I'm going to do is click the word embroidery and it's telling me it's going to do the arrow first. Okay, this will be fun. So I need a light blue color. I have some light bluish fabric here, just a fat quarter and probably, you can just use a scrap of fabric, but I went ahead and grabbed this. I don't really know how big it's gonna be. Actually, I'll wait to cut it. Let's get some blue. Oh, this is like a blue blue. And that one's kind of like a tealy blue, ew. I don't know if I have a color that matches that. Let me see in here. Hmm. Oh well, I'll just use like a, um, I'll just use that blue because that's what I have. But <laughs> if I had something that matched a little nicer, I'd probably go with that. I didn't realize how um, how teal this fabric is. Okay, I'm not going to show you every time I you know uh, put in a bobbin or a thread, but. Oh my goodness. Start at the top. Go through number one, which is right here, this little silver hook. And then go through number two, which is this plastic that's right behind here. 
down to three, up to four, which is actually catching it in the, um, the little thing that goes up and down here, down to five, into six, which is right above the, it's like the little notch that's right above the needle, over to seven, which is another little metal notch that ends up going into number seven, and then you loop over to number eight, which is back here. You have to make sure your needle is in the highest position, and then you're gonna press this tab down, and it should self um, thread, and it did, which is nice. Why do I have so much thread over here? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just have a ton of thread. <laughs> I guess I have plenty of thread because I'm not uh, using it at all. Okay, so like I said, the first one was that arrow. I can see it there. That's why I'm like, okay. And everything's good to go. I'm gonna press, oh, I have to lower the presser foot. There it goes. Now it knows it's lowered. My light's green. Now I'm good to go. It was red obviously before. So what this should do is just do like a tack down. It shouldn't do the whole embroidery yet, I don't think. If it does, I'll be surprised, yeah. So this is what happens with these fabric ones. It's basically showing you an outline of where it's going to embroider and you better put your fabric there, right? The little fabric that you bring over and I'll show you what that looks like. And after this, we're just gonna let it do its thing and I'll come back every time I change the color, but I do want you to see that, hopefully. You can see it's just an outline, it's just the slightest little outline. So it's telling you, okay, this is where you need to put that fabric. So um, so the next thing it's gonna do is it's actually going to embroider really nice over that. So I'm just gonna take a piece of this, I'm just gonna cut it off. I'm just cutting this as big as I think I need. Oh, I'll just cut into the other side there. And if I were outside, let me see, yep, that works. I'm gonna put a little bit of basting spray on it, which is this here. Um, but I'm not going to... Oh, I got it on my hands again. This stuff is so sticky. <laughs> when you get it on your hands all day long, I was like, ugh. So I'm gonna lift this up. I well, don't lift that. I'm gonna lift my presser foot. Okay, and I'm gonna put this down. This is still kind of stuck on here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that because I don't want it to be hindered. I'm gonna take this piece of fabric, just make sure that it's on there. Put my presser foot back down and press go. And now when it's gonna embroider, it's gonna embroider over that nice, thick, pretty embroidery over this fabric. And I can tell the stitch is already different. So really fun, I think I showed you guys, no, yeah, I didn't on my Couture Quintet. I thought I did show you guys this, but maybe not. So what this is gonna do, just tack it down real nice and in the meantime we're gonna before we move on move on we're gonna trim away the fabric and then it's gonna do the nice thick embroidery I think I skipped ahead of myself okay so here we are now I don't have really small scissors with me right now but what you're gonna do is trim away and I guess if you really wanted to if, I don't know how this machine reacts to it you could um, just uh, take the hoop out, but like I said, I'm not real sure how this machine, and I guess that would be something good to test on it, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna trim away the excess. And you know what? I actually have the scissors that are meant for this. Let me go and find them. They're, um, okay, I'll so right these guys. They're, um, what's the word? But see how they tuck right in there and it'll get right next to what you did and trim away. And I can't remember what the applique scissors might be. That's basically what you're making here is like a little applique. Now I would love, like I said, to get rid of this, but I don't know, I'm afraid. <laughs> Let's try it, let's try it. While we're here, we're here for a reason, right? So let me lift this up. Now tell me, hey, it's a problem here. Um, I would hate to mess this up, but let's lift that up and let's go ahead and remove this guy. Oh, so scary. So with the Futura, the old CE100, the old singers, it would reset. As soon as you remove it, it's like, oh, what happened? And it would freak out. <laughs> so awesome. Look at me trying to struggle with this thing. So I'm just gonna go around this whole thing 
basically use them this way. You keep that little thin part up. And this guy, he kind of glides over, so as you're cutting, it helps you cut close, but not cut the fabric that's under there, right? So I'll be right back as I trim around all this and I'll okay, guys, we'll I just continue. finished up. I try to get really close. One other thing now that I'm here and I'm thinking about it and I used to be very good at doing my stuff and I haven't been uh, embroidering in a long time, in a while, not a long time, but a while. Um, you could put the fusible, not fusible, sorry, the uh, water soluble stabilizer like this on top. So at the bottom you have that thick one, then you have your towel. And then on top of that, you would put this, hoop it all up. And then this helps keep the, the little terry cloth down as you're embroidering and it just makes like a nicer, smoother um, experience, right? So just something I thought to mention now, <laughs> um, but you can always do that. So again, lift up the presser foot just a little more so we can get this under here. And this is awesome, you guys. Like the machines nowadays, I mean, they're so much more advanced. Back in the day, like you would have to line it up again and all this crazy stuff, like it was such a pain. But so now we're still here and I'm just gonna back up a second and just let it do its thing. Um, okay, we're here. We've got the presser foot down, right? So now our light's green, because now we're gonna go for it. And it should do that nice blue thick outline on that arrow and then um, continue making our pattern or our design. Look at that. So I'll be back once it's done doing that because what's gonna happen is it's gonna ask me for the next color and um, I'll put in another color. Just stop, look how gorgeous that is. Oh my gosh, good thing I cut really close cause like, that's what it is. Sometimes if you want it to look like frayed or like distressed or cute, just leave the fabric there and cut it after you're done. And then it'll leave a little frizzy like fabric around. You know what I'm saying? So it looks cute, like a little, just old school, I don't know. But that's, some of them are made, some designs are made for you to do that and it'll tell you there um, in the instructions of course. The next thing is the word coffee and the coffee bean is what I'm seeing here. So hopefully you guys can see. I know when the when the light is on, it's hard to, to see what's going on. But um, okay, so I'm just going to cut this thread, remove the blue thread, and put down some brown thread. This is so much fun, you guys. I don't know why I don't use my machines. Even like, like if you had this, wouldn't you want to use it every day, all the time? Put your name, put your kids' names on everything? I think we should. So I'm have this really dark brown. I have a lighter one, but I think I'm gonna go with the dark one because I'm gonna go with the really dark blue too for the word life begins. So um, I want a color that's gonna, I've never used, as you can see, it's brand new. I'm gonna place it back in that same spot. Just remembered I didn't use the spool protector, which is, where'd I put it? <laughs> I don't even know where it is. There's a little circle that was here that keeps it from moving, but see, I didn't even use it and I don't even need it. Okay, so I'm gonna string this up. I don't want to waste your guys' time. Next time when I come back, I'll have changed out the color, I think. But basically we're gonna put in the new thread. It doesn't take too long. Through there, through here, over to number eight. Make sure the needle's in the highest position. And there it is threaded and I always pulled the wrong side so I keep pulling thread because I pulled the wrong uh, end there um, so now we have our brown thread in and all you have to do is just press to go because it's just telling you what's going to come up next you don't have to press it I guess if you wanted to skip it you could do that which is kind of odd but for now I'm just pressing it and we're doing the little coffee bean and the word coffee and I'll be back once it's done doing its little magic oh check and re-thread upper thread See, it's good to know all these things. Let me find that little guard. That's probably the problem. I'm gonna re-thread it. And I'm gonna put the guard and I'll be right back so we can I take care of this. I re-threaded it and I put the guard back. And what I mean by the guard is this thing, that little plastic in the front, which I had left out because I didn't know where it was. So we're gonna say, okay. <laughs> Let's try it again. I always kind of hold the thread and I haven't been doing that either. So that might be another reason why it might have caught up on itself. Let's see if it's okay now. Okay. A lot of times if I see it, look at check and re-thread upper thread again. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. 
I'm gonna redo the thing and I'll be right okay. back. Possibly third time's a charm. I just did it again. I just need to Ugh, get the thread going. Okay. I'm gonna hold both of these threads back and say, okay, let's try it again. It again, I'm just gonna switch out the, the thread. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like I said, I probably should have put that clear stabilizer on the top to keep the little met the terry cloth down. You never know. There's always little issues that come up here and there, and it's because like, oh, it doesn't like the way it feels, so you know it thinks something's wrong with something else when it is just something as easy as that. Um, but okay, it's doing its work. We will see. Okay guys, so far so good. It's getting it. Look how cute that bean is. But yeah, I probably should have put that little clear solvent on top. But oh well. Almost done. It's on that last E. I did want to show you though, and I was like, well, I should have my color chart. Like you can pull it up obviously on your computer. But you can kind of see what colors they want you to use here. So you know this brown is gonna take 11 minutes, and it probably has taken about 11 minutes, especially a little more with all those, you know, messing up the uh, the thread. But the next one's gonna be pink, and then that little yellow that's like the little swirl, yellow swirls back here, and then the dark blue, which is Life Begins. So I am going to switch out to pink as soon as this is done, and we're almost there. I'll let it keep going so you can kind of see what it does. I mean, this stuff is so fun, like it's so easy. I don't know why I don't use it more often, but at the same time, it can be frustrating. I say just read your manuals, hang in there. You know, I know how to switch out that one thread, but what's great about these machines is that they pick right up where they left off, like with a new tacking stitch and then it keeps going. Back in the day, I'm telling you, if it did that, you might have to unhoop it, you might have to re-thread and it reset at the time, so now you gotta bring it back down where it should be. It was a real pain. So thank goodness for new, you know, technology, <laughs> or technology that maybe costs less now because back in the day, they probably could do it, they just didn't, right? Keep things, uh, and a good price point but like my content i think when i got the content it was it was over a thousand bucks and so you know that's kind of a bummer so i do want to mention when it gets to the end of the word like if it didn't mess up like earlier it was messing up so i had to cut the thread myself it cuts the thread and it cuts the um the bobbin thread too so like you're done right so you're done with it you can just pull it out so now my next color is going to be the pink it shows up in the little box here but i also could see ahead right that the next one was going to be pink so I'm just gonna throw up my pink and then just press the green button and get the um, the little width, I guess the word width is the pink, and then um, I'll come back when it's done. Okay, we're coming to the end. What's funny is um, it says life begins after coffee. I guess that makes more sense. Cause I was like, life well, begins with coffee. It's kind of weird, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, after coffee, when you wake up. All right, looks good. You wanna turn away some of these little guys. Okay, so that's it. And now over here, it shows me that it's gonna make the little curly cues, the next step. Uh, in the yellow, it's gonna take two minutes, it says. So I'm just going to, um, oopsie, not that. <laughs> I wanna back out and I'm gonna switch out my um, stuff here, my thread to the yellow spool. And then I'll press go and I'll come back when we're ready to do the next part. Okay, the yellow is almost done. I do want to mention that that's very fine. That yellow little squirrel is super cute, super fine. Definitely put some stabilizer on top of the uh, terry towel. It, if it's terry, right, especially because um, it has that little bubbliness and it can get in the way of your design being nice and crisp. So either a very lightweight stabilizer or like that water soluble one like I showed you. Um, which I do love that water soluble stabilizer. It's really nice, but um, you know, I, I, I can see and it's very cute. It's done really nicely, but it could be a little nicer, right? With that stabilizer there. Um, one other thing, uh, we, I just have to switch out to our blue. It didn't look like it cut this one this time, which is interesting. So part of that, to be honest, has to do with the um, the design, right? That what 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 the design is telling the machine to do, right? It's telling stitch here, stitch here, stitch here, stitch there, but at the end of the design, whoever wrote it up, it designed by you didn't say, hey, now clip it at the end. So if it's a embroidery design that comes from Brother, normally it knows like at the end when it's done, it clips the 
thread. So it did clip it for some of it, but not all of the <laughs> sections. And that again has to do with whoever uh, did the uh, the coating, right? So blue, oh, bummer. I have a really dark blue and I have like a lighter fun blue. I don't know which blue I want to use. Oh, hmm. I don't know. Let's go with the royal, like the lighter fun kind of blue. I guess I wasn't planning on that, but it's pretty and well, so I'm gonna load this up and it's gonna be the last part, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, I wasn't gonna show this part. I literally am three letters from finishing the thing up and it ran out of bobbin thread. It said it's almost gone, which basically means it's gone and you need to replace it. So there's no other way to open it up and then go and do your bobbin because this thing, you know, you have to do that when you're asked about it. Like right now, it wasn't gonna work. So I have to kind of back out of this and I didn't want to do that. So I just used another machine that I have, another sewing machine, and I reloaded the bobbin. Okay, so I'm just letting you know because I wasn't sure how to handle it. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? I don't know. So I just redid it and here we are. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. It is supposed to go in there and now through here, but whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna put the cap back on. I'm gonna bring this back into place. I'm gonna snap it back on. What's a bummer is that I had to, well at first I was like, okay, maybe I can replace the bobbin thread or wind it while it's on here, but it doesn't let you. So I had undone all my blue thread so I'm gonna put the blue thread back on. I guess we'll do it together. And whenever I comment that you should have the, um, what's the thing called? The presser foot at its highest position. It should do that automatically, the machine does. But sometimes I, when I first bought this machine, it was kind of missing. I wasn't able to thread it. So I had to like kind of manually. So just if you're using an automatic threader and it keeps missing, it keeps missing, it keeps missing, just make sure that you're, like right now it caught it and that's fine. So it should do it automatically, like I said, but, oh, I just pulled it out. <laughs> Cause uh, what happens is if, when you go to do this and uh, you pull the thread the wrong way, it'll get pulled out instead of in. So, oopsie. So let's pull it this way. There we go. Okay. I'm going to put the presser foot down. I'm going to press the green button now. That was, and see, it does a tack down again, which is great. I do like that. I don't like that I couldn't reload my bobbin. I should have one backup, right? You should have several bobbins loaded is what would be the best of all the worlds here, but I didn't do that, so. Um, I'm hoping that the B, it only did the bottom part of the B. So hopefully when it comes back around or something, it'll finish up the B, I don't know. We will see what it does. But uh, I'm gonna let it keep going and I'll be back. So this last part of the word is so weird. Like I told you, the top of the B wasn't there and I went to finish up the G and then it came back and did the top of the B and then it went over to the I, I guess, to get from the G. This is all one letter, like one continuous and then the I and S is kind of on its own over here. So I guess that's why they finished it up and then they came back over here. I noticed the N, yeah, it doesn't have a top. I'm like, the N doesn't have a top stick. It's doing it right now after it finished up the S. So weird. But this will be the last part. We're almost done. And I have a couple of um, observations, okay? So I made this video because people were asking about the USB and how to use it uh, in finished embroidering. Okay. So, let's get this cut off here. Take it off there, lift up our presser foot, push back, pull back on this tab, this little silver metal thing, you pull it towards the arm there. All right, so we're all done. If you like this and you were like, oh, I need to make 15 of them, obviously you can just go back and start it over again. Or if you wanted to save it, that's, you know, you can save your design. I'm just going to go back. I'm just gonna turn the machine off basically. <laughs> okay to cancel current selection, okay. And that's it. And you can just turn off your machine and pull out the USB, go to the next design on your USB, whatever you're gonna do. Now, my observations here are, when you use this, so this happened when I made my Minnie Mouse one too. I'm like, hey, because I had stripes going down the middle of my towel and her face was kind of a little bit to the left and I was like, well, whatever, you know, it's fine. Um, and then now this one again, if you really look at it, Hope you can see there's a smaller space here than there is over here, but supposedly it was in the middle of the graph, right? And the image and everything that we chose it for it to be dead center. Well, yeah, it's dead center, dead center to this, okay? Now let's look at this little guy. 
make sure your ABCs are, you know, facing you. They're not backwards like this, you know, not legible. The ABC that um, this big old loop is on the top for whatever reason. These little registration dots, there's little holes there. So I would recommend getting like a chalk marker or whatever you want to use to go ahead and use this. Like if I have my shirt sitting here or whatever I'm gonna embroider on and be like, okay, this is where I want to put it. I would put it down. I would chalk mark those things. And then when I come to settle it into my embroidery hoop, I, I go by that, okay, what that looks like. Um, because that's basically what this thing is doing. And then line it up again. But what's scary about that, what's weird about it, is like when you go to place it in here, know that it's a little bit too, you can even see on this plastic, see how it's like maybe half inch, maybe, nah, I would say three eighths of an inch over here, but it's more like five eighths of an inch over here gap. So just know that it's not gonna be dead center to this plastic ring, okay? I've never had that. I don't know why you have to make those adjustments, like with the Frisura. If it's dead center, it's dead center. It's not saying it's dead center, but now you have to like know that you're a little bit <laughs> to the left here. Does that make sense? So it's kind of weird. Uh, if you guys know why that is, let me know. Obviously it has to do with the way it stitches, but like, it's kind of a bummer because this is a little bit more left than I would like for it to be. And you know, having lined it up with this when it was on here, I thought we're good, but I didn't really notice that there's that little gap that's a little bit bigger. So just know that and adjust for that. Um, like I said, that's the first time I ever seen something like that on my other machines. It was just what it is and you go with that, you know, but what I'm going to do now while it's still on here, cause it makes it easier is trim all the little, all the little threads that don't need to be there, right? The ones that need to just be gone. And then like these long ones that are traveling from one area to another, like here, right? So I'll be right back while it's still on here. It's nice and taut. That's why it's easier to do. Um, try not to cut the. Again, if I had that little soluble or any kind of stabilizer on top, this would be a lot easier because I could just go and I wouldn't be hurting any of the terry cloth. But I'll be right back when I'm done snipping everything. Okay, I do want to show you that sometimes there's some that are like, like right here, from life to the B. You can trim that. They tack it down at the end of the word and at the beginning of the word, but it's so small, I'm just gonna leave it. It doesn't hurt anything. And then like this coffee, this, it came from here and it came all over here, so it was a big long string. So just get the very end of the strings and you'll be fine. So now we're just going to take it off of our um, hoop. So I'm unscrewing underneath there, just loosening it up is the easiest part. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. And on the back, nice and clean, look at that. So all you do is rip away your stabilizer. Um, now you can come in here and pick out like all these little pieces or you can just leave them to be honest. I don't know if you ever looked at the back of like an embroidered hat or something like that. They just like leave the whole thing. But since this is going to be washed and used more often, maybe you want to rip it all off. But there's it. That is it, you guys. Super cute. I hope you learned a little something about that, like, you know, that little uh, fabric. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of designs that all take stuff like that. Like right now I have a little gingerbread one that I'm like, oh, I'm dying to do or a snowman. And you just put a piece of fabric, it does the thing, trim it away, let it finish up. But look how nice that finishes. That's I love embroidery that looks like this. Like this would look like even the F, it looks a lot nicer if we had that little stabilizer back there because of the terry cloth again. So whenever you're making towels, you do want to put at least the stabilizer underneath and one on top or just the one on top. Like I always put one underneath, but um, it just depends on what you want to do. But that just makes it smoother, right? But look at that. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So we had some hiccups and I'm still learning the machine. I hope you guys learned a little something and are willing to try it because it's so fun. It's so much fun. Even with the frustrations, this machine, I love the way it just picks right up off of where if something was wrong, it tacks it down and then continues going. Like that's amazing. What I mean tack down is it means it goes back and forth a little bit or up and down so that your thread doesn't unravel or undo later. So I really like that, but super cute, cute designs. Love designs by Juju. Check them out. I'm telling you good stuff. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now. Thank you.